Hi everyone, welcome to Our Sky, Our Story. Over here we basically, we go back like the ancients and we use the actual visible sky to interpret our astrology because why? It just makes more logical fucking sense to use the sky and not just a circle drawing and accept what they have told us is true astrology because mainstream tropical astrology is inaccurate as fuck. So um, yeah, <laughs> like I says, the sun right now is in Ophetius. And you may have not even acknowledged that star constellation, but it's happening in the sky above our head. So it's very important. But anyway, welcome. My name is Kalita Salia. If you are new, if you are not, then welcome. Um, I am a real angel. I'm a mother and I also dabble in crypto. So do make sure you check out my Crypto Angles podcast where I combine astrology of the sky and cryptocurrency together. So as you can see, I kind of already semi started the video, but I had a call. It was an important call and I needed to take it and it just, I didn't get too far into it. I was only on Neptune so it's okay so we're starting again um I do say as well don't believe me that this is where the luminaries the stars are check for yourself google it grab a calendar get an app um this calendar it does have 15 percent off right now type in holy days because we are in the Christmas the Christ mass holy days so do treat yourself to that if you'd like um, this one does go into it's amazing for beginners it has all the symbology as I said because we use the sky there's much more that we look at and we do also link it to the body body to you know zodiac to body correlation so feel free to grab that we've gone a leg up but we're gonna get right into it anyway as i says these are where the positions will be on the 10th of december the r's are retrograding all my socials and this is the present moment so grab it um we are we're good we're going through the transits right now then we're going to go through the moon transits then we're going to clarify with some tarot two of cups <laughs> and then we're going to come back to the present moment because the present is all that matters so anyway um venus is in libra so what i was saying venus is entering libra on the 11th as you can see this cycle we're going from um the day of the sun to saturn's day so venus enters libra on the 11th so what is this about venus is all about the material reality it covers our six senses sight touch hearing smell taste as well as intuition um so it's what you find valuable within the material reality, which would which makes you want to then interact with it, to use your six senses basically to interact with it. It does cover love and money as well. And it's also your receptive mode. So I do see all of this as technology. So this is how you receive. So it's moving into Libra. Um, Libra, I do see as an amazing manifesto, but Libra fuels the seventh house. Seventh house is all about relationships. So not just, I know a lot of people kind of think, oh, romantic relationships, but it's not just romantic relationships. I like to take it that little step further. And it's what's the relationship with yourself. It's a relationship with whatever thoughts, because this, this little drawing is weird. But this is Libra, it's an amazing manifesto. This little black dot is the thought in your mind that's coming from the ether, see? And then it comes out from the mind and it gets weighed on the scales, like, is it going to be balanced? Whatever this thought is that's in your mind. Um, yeah, so this is the relationship you've got with yourself, the relationship you've got with your own projects, your own business, your own route at work, for example, it's that thought, that idea you've got, and it's like, do you have, is there balance within that? And then, of course, it goes to the relationships you've got with people. It's about creating that balance. And I do always say, when it comes to Libra and the scales, it's important to know if something is worth being on the scales or not. Like, sometimes you have to just throw it off the scales because it shouldn't be there. However, if it should be there, um, if it should be there, then it's about making that balance. So what, what I'm kind of seeing here is, um, what I'm kind of seeing is we may, what we may find like valuable and what we may truly want to be kind of doing from this point on, it's going to be in Libra till, oh, how long? 
up till the 1st of January. Oh, can you see? Till it enters Scorpio. So, it's not so big. Um, till we end, till the 1st of January. So, basically, from now till the end of December, basically, the rest of December, um, what we may be finding valuable, not only you, but when people come into your life, you may notice it as well. They may be truly trying to get a balance. They may be truly just apologizing, saying, oh, this didn't happen because of such and such. They may realize like, yeah, I would like, you know, I need to make a bit more time um, and actually trying to make that work. You may actually be trying to make it work to bring in that balance. But it's like, that's how you're kind of wanting to use your six senses right now quite naturally and again if someone because this is how you receive you will just naturally open up when someone comes to actually try and create that balance with you in your life okay you will be more open to receive and you will close off if someone clearly isn't trying to make a balance so trust yourself if you close off to any situations um, for sure, like basically they don't deserve to be on the scale. And of course, um, if you match it and compare it with your own birth chart, um, then that's how you know how it will be impacting you much more. So, for example, I do offer birth chart readings. If you would like, um, I offer a standard and an extended. The standard, we look at all of these luminaries as well as Chiron. The extended, we go into the inner child because that's the inner child C, as well as your birth card of illumination and your a little birthday numerology and we synchronize it all together. So it's £20 for the standard and 25 for the extended, but it will be going up in January. Um, it will be 25 for the standard and 30 for the extended so if you would like it then do get at me for this month or if not you know you don't need it anyway if you trust yourself but if you do compare your birth chart to this then you'll know a little bit more deeper um yeah you'll know a bit more deeper so for example my venus is in taurus so um that's just a lot about the physical reality basically and my toroidal field my energetic field covers money too venus just cover a bit of money but um so i'm kind of seeing for me it's just even more impactful on literally what i am experiencing in my reality so yeah all of my experiences what my five senses are touching is literally going to be amplified to create balance um yeah to create balance please do forgive me if my mood sounds a little off I did have a passing in an extended family, so I'm a little bit off and I've just not really had the best news myself. Like at this point, I don't know if I'm going to be here for too long. <laughs> oh, life's a bitch. But anyway, moving now on to Neptune into Pisces. So Neptune, it only just retrograded a little bit back into Aquarius for a moment. And it stationed direct last Wednesday, as you can see yesterday it's station direct yesterday yesterday and now it's entering back into pisces so neptune is happy in pisces neptune is a water sign pisces is a water sign neptune is delusional as fuck pisces is delusional as fuck so it's super happy here anyway but neptune um Neptune is the technology that allows you to reach that deepest depth of who you are, the deepest aspect of who you are, because it is like the deepest one. Being Poseidon's trident and a water element is connected to everything. And this is why the delusional aspect is there, because it recognises no separation, because it knows that we are actually um, connected. So this is why you may feel a dream is delusional or a goal that you'd like to read is delusional but Neptune don't found Neptune says okay you want that we'll attach you to that frequency and you can experience it like it's as simple as that so it's moving back into Pisces though and Pisces has just a lot of wisdom to it um being the 13th sign because Ophetius is the ninth sign after in between Scorpio and Sagittarius Ophetius is number nine bring in Pisces at number 13. Pisces has all of the wisdom of all of the other luminaries in it and it likes to share this wisdom in very creative ways. Um, so instead of just outright saying it, it wants to do it a bit more poetically, a bit more artistically to share this wisdom that it knows. Um, Pisces' placements can be very misunderstood in general 
um and it does cover things that are a bit more hidden in nature so um yeah so basically kind of what i'm seeing when it comes to reaching the depth of who you are that deepest aspect of you that knows um that just knows basically you'd be drawn more i feel to more hidden wisdom so things probably a bit more taboo not quite widely out there and you may feel more drawn to sharing this wisdom oh gosh in a very creative and unique way and this will obviously link in with saturn being in aquarius because aquarius is about unique ideas anyway and that's where saturn being time is where we're spending most of our time so it's like this unique idea about sharing like your wisdom in a creative way it will tap into reaching the depth of who you are so neptune is going to be in pisces for a while it's not moving for now it's a slower luminary so i feel it's literally there throughout the whole of like 2024 into 2025 i feel it's just chilling in pisces um like i don't feel it's moving anywhere i can't i mean i've done the whole calendar take a look neptune neptune yeah so even we've got july july's beautiful it's my favorite one but we've got oh, i'll show it this way neptune station retrogrades in pisces so <laughs> this neptune in pisces energy is um it's big so it's going to be there for a while it's a slower moving luminary so allow the momentum to kick it in but when it comes to your intuition your literally your dreams at night pay attention your gut feeling your visions as well it may be very piscean in terms of the depth and the wisdom that comes through um in whichever creative way so definitely trust what comes through for sure um yeah with your dreams and pay attention it's there for a while so yeah mercury is stationary retrograde in sagittarius so what is this and of course child entering officious so mercury is all about energetic exchange how we exchange our energy at the end of the day so this is the way you think in your mind so it's all of your thoughts so not your feelings it's the thought technology that's put there your thoughts, um, how you communicate. So me speaking right now is my Mercury technology activating and money, monetary as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it is the her confirmation, but so Mercury is Hermes and is the winged God. Now I clocked something that winged God is in Black Panther 2. He comes up as like the water and I wonder the water, but that's really Hermes wild i'm gonna definitely do a truth in plain sight movie decode of that movie because i've not heard anyone talk about it that's mercury bro that's mercury but anyway it's station retrograde retrogrades offer like a going back i know a lot of people just like oh, it's mercury retrograde don't even speak you could get it wrong shut the fuck up retrogrades basically offer a going back a crossing the i's dotting the t's of things that you needed to put in place so if you didn't have the time space or capacity to do this energy exchange before you're now going to have the time space and capacity to get it done and you will get it done within this moving back period so when it begins to move forward you'll kind of go over just that aspect where it already went over to again give you more energy to kind of propel you a bit more into the direction you'd like to go um because if these things were to just keep going 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 you wouldn't even have that time to finish off what was necessary which will then help you keep going even further okay so that is retrograde my aim and entire intention with my videos my readings and everything is to get people out of this fear mode like no all of this is there to support you it's technology there to support you it's irrelevant without your existence you see what i'm saying and it's there to support you never be afraid of oh it's gonna be doing this i can't no do whatever the fuck you need to do okay but anyway it's retrograding in sagittarius so what's sagittarius about sagittarius is very um precise it's the maturest fire sign um being a centurion it is um 
mystical, it's very mystical in nature and it has a very philosophical perspective to it. So it does cover higher learning, education, things of that nature. But because he is mystical, um, it does cover mysticism and esoteric occult knowledge as well. But not just believing it, it's from a philosophical point of view. So you're getting the receipts, basically. Um, it does cover as you can see just the symbol anyway it's very focused very direct precise being the maturest fire sign and it covers travel as well so when it comes to how we're exchanging our energy we may be um we may be going over more education we may be um if we hadn't finished certain education learning certain things we maybe have the time to just go over again and do that um we may be even traveling <laughs> you may be if you didn't have a chance to go somewhere or if you, if you don't travel at this point in time, you may be thinking back and saying, oh, I would have liked to travel. And you may exchange your energy money wise or exchange your thoughts to put travel in place at a future date. So that could also come up as well. You may be drawn back to more knowledge that you may have saw something like, oh, shit, that was interesting. And then you didn't really look into it. It may just all of a sudden pop back up. So keep it, keep that in mind. And of course, this Sagittarius energy as fortune is in there. Um, as fortune is in there, it's going to be fortunate to just be in this energy anyway. Um, and I, I, did mention in my last video but i'm gonna say again i will be like in oh, your book. where you want your book oh yes hold on yeah so in the new year i will be working a bit more on my patreon but the beginning of january i will release a video on youtube normally oh gosh confirmation pen roll but i will be releasing a video and see if you like it to just give a monthly kind of update on how the luminaries where they are how they're supporting you there and then basically it will be donation based so it will start from four pounds and if you'd like to donate more then there will be other options but everyone will have access to everything um i just like to keep it donation based so anyway so do keep in mind anyway with how we're exchanging our energy. We're just kind of going back a little. We're, going, we're crossing the I's and dotting the T's to allow us to move forward in this Sag energy. And then inner child now. Inner child going into Ophetius. So um, the inner child is what it says. It represents your inner child and we co-create with your inner child. So um, being within this Ophetius energy... As well as, of course, where your inner child is. If you would like the ex extended version, do let me know. But it will be nurturing and cultivating for your inner child being within this Ophetius energy. And it is interesting anyway, because the sun right now is in Ophetius. So the sun, excuse me, represents the ego and it's the lens that you operate through. So you see, you will be seeing your reality through this Ophetius energy, basically. Um, and your inner child has touched base or it's touching base next cycle on the 14th in this Ophetius energy so it's like Ophetius is known as the serpent bearer and is the healer and transmutator of energy it's linked to magnesium with an on the periodic table because all of this is just elements that's how it impacts us okay it's technology that impacts the elements within us so it's linked to magnesium. So um, do make sure it will be cultivated into your inner child by keeping up your magnesium intake as of now. OK, you need it anyway. So do make sure you are keeping that up. But transformation, when you have this magnesium, when you literally um, transform your energy because you've got the energy to do so, you can hold more data, more capacity to live out the life you'd like to live. So that is officious, basically, on the Zodiac wheel. We've picked up all the information and we're just like, okay, we'd like to live and experience our reality in a certain way. So along comes Scorpio, the Scorpio death. And then after you have that, you 
heal and transform so your cells can hold the data within you to attract the experiences you would like in your life. After this transformation of Ophetius, you then enter Sagittarius to take you in a new focus, clear direction. Okay, so that's how the Zodiac story works. And I'm still going to do one whole video explaining just the whole Zodiac story. So I can definitely refer people to that um, instead of me trying to squeeze it all in in every video. Um, so... Yes, being in this transformative energy, if you've been feeling like, yeah, you're ready to kind of do and be and live how you'd kind of like to live, it's transformation time. It's literally transformation time and this transformation will be healing for your inner child. Okay, it really will. So, um, let's get the pen that rolled away. We're going to move on to the moon phases quickly and then I'll be semi-wrapping up. So the moon on the 11th, we'll get rid of you, we have a Scorpio moon. So this is, so the moon will be in Scorpio when we're having our no moon, new moon, as you can see here on the 12th. So it enters on the 11th, I feel it enters late, it doesn't enter early, it enters quite late because the moon doesn't stay in Scorpio for too long. Um, but this no moon, new moon is obviously still in Scorpio. So, uh, on, on the 12th, so it's late on the 12th again, it does enter Ophetius. It does enter Ophetius, so it is late. So basically we are getting like a Scorpio slash Ophetius new moon. Um, on the 13th, we have a Sag, we have a Sag moon. And then on the 15th, we have a Capricorn moon. So the moon is the mover of our emotions. It gets our energy in motion um, through a feeling, our intuition, etc., etc. And from that feeling, that emotion, we then act something. From that act, the sun will then attract an experience to you or the act itself is that experience. But then you then see it through the lens of wherever the sun is so that's how the sun and moon technology work together and coexist so the moon moves our emotions so the way our energy and our emotions are moving throughout this cycle is is through this um ultimately it's transformation energy which will bring you in a new direction and a foundation will begin to get laid through how you're transforming. So that's how our energy is moving this cycle in a nutshell. However, when the moon is fully illuminated, your emotions, your energy is moved more on um, just gut feeling, how you're feeling, your emotions, just intuition, just like, oh yeah, just feeling to do it. Your emotions will move you that way. However, when the moon is not illuminated, when it's a no moon, new moon, your emotions, your energy is moved more on logic and reasoning. So it has to be a bit more logical why you're making your, why your emotions are moving you in a certain way, why you feel a certain way. You, you, It would just be like, like if it's not logical, you're probably not going to entertain it that much right now. So how you're kind of transforming, especially with child going into Ophetius as well, Mercury station in retrograde, um, and how you're kind of wanting to get balance within your material. I feel this balance in your material will, will come from how your emotions are transforming at this time. Scorpio, as I said, it brings about this death. So your emotions will be moving you in a very deep way Scorpio being a water sign as well is very deep in nature um very passionate because Scorpio is fueled by um Scorpio's fueled by as you can see Scorpio's fueled by Pluto as well as Mars and it's a water sign okay so it has death and rebirth qualities within it and it also has that passion that flame that fire and um, so it's very passionate in nature so if your emotions are moving you on monday and tuesday 
in a very passionate, deep way, if that passion and deepness is tapping into a vulnerable aspect of you, but as it's got its stinger, it may be coming across as vulnerable, but really that's its strength. So keep an eye on how your energy is being moved on Monday and Tuesday. Um, keep an eye every day, of course, but see, just see if it fits. Don't force it to fit. See if you, your energy is moving you in a very passionate way. If you are recognizing your vulnerability and using that as a strength. Um, yeah, definitely see that and see what happens. But from how your emotions are moving you, um, from how, yeah, from how your energy is moving on Monday and into Tuesday, it will bring about this transformation. So it's like, that's why I definitely pay attention to kind of what comes up and what you are tapping into as your depth, you know, because of course, Neptune on this day, the 12 is entering back into Pisces. That's just like depth, um, not death, the depth of who you are, DPT, I can't spell it, but see where your depths are, see how deep you are, um, because I feel it's that deepness of who you just naturally are, which will help you transform to bring about this true balance in your physical reality, so um, your emotions, again, it may be moving you at the end of Tuesday, going into Wednesday, in this transformative way, this very just like you may be feeling more like, oh, I need to do this or I need to do that or doing this makes me feel better or, you know, because you're trying to transform. <laughs> you're trying to transform, you're trying to heal and transform your energy so you can hold more data. And then once your energy is being moved in that way of feeling the need to transform, so you then act on it. So you then act on it, see? <laughs> um, your emotions will then be up up in this Sagittarius energy of wanting to take you into another new direction um yeah so again this could be in alignment with Mercury station in retrograde your emotions are moving you in this Sag energy of like it could be just like oh I feel like I need to be exchanging my energy in this way so that's the moon the feeling linking in with the Mercury technology of energy exchange within this Sagittarius energy so again I love how it kind of all synchronizes together it really does um it really does so do pay attention of course to how your emotions are moving you at that time um round about how you would like to exchange your energy when it comes to this Sagittarius focus you could be getting feelings of like oh I'd really like to travel here I'd really like to learn this again oh my days what was that thing that I came across I need to find it to look more into it um it could be things of that nature but your energy will be being moved to support excuse me confirmation but the um retrograde of mercury Okay, it will be moving to support the retrograde of Mercury in Sagittarius. And then, of course, the moon, the mover of your emotions is tapping into Capricorn on Friday. So um, from this transformation that's coming about from this uh, like focus, new direction that you'd like to go in or, you know, be precise in in a mature way, your emotions will then move you to start laying a foundation with this Capricorn energy. And I feel it will be laying this foundation to then truly begin to experience this balance in your reality. Because Capricorn is a balance of water, earth, spirit, matter. So it's about having that balance, really. So you've got Libra and Capricorn trying to balance things out. But I feel in order to truly have this balance this transformation is needed um, and your emotions will then be moving you to lay a more solid foundation, a more long-term goal orientated lens to maintain this balance that you're ready to experience with your six senses. Okay, that's what I am um, seeing there. Do let me know if this resonates at all, if you see that um take a deep breath with me a 
and let's clarify with our tarot buy. Our tarot buy, let's clarify. So, yeah, do let me know, of course, if all of this does resonate. Do let me know as well if you'll be interested in um, getting like a monthly update on page Patreon. There will be one video out just on YouTube so I can show people and that will come out at the beginning of January. Um, and if you'd like that monthly, do let me know as well as going deeper into the moon. Like looking at the actual chemical element of the moon <laughs> so there will be two videos as well as some extra ones but there will definitely be two videos a month on patreon and um, the moon the full moon as well as how the luminaries are supporting you in that time um and then my own little decodes kind of how i decode myself and a little bit of my children just so we can read the hologram you know just so we can read the hologram so we've got the ten of wands coming up as part of the energy of this cycle um okay let me know any more energy of this cycle for the collective please and forgive me for my mel melancholy but um yeah i feel it would be can i, I get a clear message i don't I need a clear message. Um, let me do it in front of the camera. How are you lot feeling anyway? I'm not feeling the best, I'll be honest. Um, but let that not interfere. Things have to get done. We've got the Six of Cups. A bit of nostalgia coming in, but playfulness this cycle. And that's what I mean. It's kind of like with this Mercury station in retrograde, this could also be you flipped out nicely. Oh, we've got death in reverse. Mm. Death in reverse. Interesting. Can you clarify that? When we had this in reverse. Five of pentacles. Last clarity. <laughs> I just saw the devil, but then the world. Oh, let me just not look down at these cards. Last clarity, please, to clarify the energies of this cycle. Ten of Wands, Six of Cups, Death, Five of Pentacles. Are we really getting balance? Have we transformed enough? And it ends, we've got two of swords in reverse too so with the high priestess at the top of the deck so what is all of this about sure um let's read the death in reverse that 13 number 13 of course so okay it's so a death in reverse it may mean that whatever cycle that you're in hasn't fully ended yet hasn't fully ended that's interesting do you want to know why that that is interesting is because the sun the ego is still in this transformative energy literally till the 19th so i feel our emotions are definitely moving us in this way to begin or to not to begin to continue and amplify this transformation type of thing um but the whole cycle's not done yet so it's going to be done in soon it's going to be done in soon but this transformation for sure is starting and it's happening and as well child's in officious yes darling what does she want love yeah, so transformation happening for sure. It's just it's just not fully over. So we do have the two of swords only because of it's there. So um basically the two of swords during this beginning of transformation, during this way our emotions and our energy is getting ready to transform. 
um there's no denial at this point so i feel you're just accepting what's coming in you're not going to be blocked to your own feelings um it's going to be clear it's going to be logical because it's a no moon new moon in scorpio so it's going to be logical on how you're kind of tapping into your the deepest part of you and how you're ready to transform basically um it's going to be clear on your passion and your drive um and it's going to be logical so if you are feeling just natural naturally passionate about certain things as we start this cycle please trust yourself because it's coming from a logical way a logical way um you are going to be available you're going to be available and that's just bringing me back to this libra energy you're wanting to create this balance um there's no longer putting up barriers or pretending one thing yet feeling another so um yeah so the cycles you know, the transformations happening basically cycles not fully ended but it's a gossa it a gossa. so 10 of wands 10 of wands what's that about um okay so this transformation that's not quite happening <laughs> you may just feel bloody tired but you may feel like you're still going through this uphill battle and struggle you know this could appear this came out first so because this came out first i feel this will be more i'm more inclined to that being at the beginning of the cycle um this 10 of ones energy that's what I'm more inclined to say because it's like the balance, the Libra to get this balance, it hasn't come in. Mercury's not re station retrograde. You know what I'm saying? So I feel when these things kind of come in or before it comes in or at the beginning of the cycle, it, you just may feel even more just drained. I feel drained already. So bring it on life. Fucking bring it on at this point. Gosh. Oh, um, yeah but i do feel that like yeah you just it's gonna be a struggle <laughs> i feel it's gonna be a struggle and maybe that's why this whole transformation with the death in reverse hasn't it's not ended yet because we are in this transforming energy so it's not it's not gonna be easy i'm you know i'm gonna say that clear it's not gonna be easy um, change is always difficult anyway um, but I feel this struggle kind of you're still not in denial about it you're not blind to the truth your emotions are moving in a logical way so um, just be gentle with yourself this cycle please people so then we have the five of pentacles in reverse so um, it's like the hardship's there because the ten of wands but it's just like this victim mentality um neglecting your own needs and stuff is it's not happening um it's not happening i feel your emotions will be moving you in a logical way and for some people with this ten of wands energy it may slip over for this to be upright um so you are kind of neglecting your needs and things of that nature. But please just be gentle with yourself this cycle. Um, transformation isn't easy. And there is a little bit of this six of cups. So it's like even though there's struggle this cycle. I like when I do videos where I was like, it's going to be amazing. But no, this cycle's going to be tough as fuck. It's not going to be easy. Um, You may just feel a bit of nostalgia this cycle. Um childhood memories may be coming up um doing good and sentimental thoughts so people may be reminiscing um reminiscing on things we of course we do have the high priestess at the top of the deck so that energy is kind of just there through this transformation time um which and that's mercury and mercury's retrograding so that's um some secrets hidden feelings intuition going to be strong the healer feminine power silent potential mystical influences a secret will be revealed seeing beyond what's obvious trusting in your inner guide being receptive so yeah i feel something may be logical 
something may just be logical and come up quite logical um but that's like the bottom of the deck something mystical and things like of that nature i feel my mind feels a bit loopy so forgive me i'm trying to synchronize it as best as i can but let's come back now to the present moment take a deep breath And breathe. Exhale. So, um, the present moment, as well as the calendar, being having fifteen percent off. Present moment, right now, the moon is in Virgo. Done been in Virgo for time, and then of course yesterday, Neptune station direct in Aquarius um so still up until it transits up until it transits into back into Pisces do pay attention what comes up when it's about your dreams your intuition and things of that nature um yeah just pay attention to what comes up because it will be connected a bit more to this Aquarian energy where Saturn is of how you truly want to um, give to others or how you want to cultivate your unique idea. So do pay attention um, if that answer comes up in your dreams or anything. Pay attention to it for sure um, because it's now forward movement in it. And I feel like this is where all the transformation comes from and the struggle, like it's not started yet because we're, we're now moving more into our dreams at that frequency that we know we can tap into because neptune knows it can there's nothing separate um so we're moving forward in that and i feel that this is probably that last phase of life is fucking tough it may continue i don't fucking know at this point <laughs> i don't know but there's definitely forward m movement um, so just pay attention before it transits into Pisces anyway of what comes up with your unique idea okay definitely pay attention to that and when it comes to the moon the mover of our emotions right now it will it's in Virgo and it will be in Virgo pretty much for the next couple of days because Virgo is the longest star constellation so all the luminaries stay in Virgo for the longest but our emotions are moving us in a way where we're truly looking at all the details of things and analysing situations, okay? Um, yeah, <laughs> so if you've been questioning things, if you've been brought back at certain things to just look at things, to think, what happened? This happened, that happened. Well, that's been me anyway, so I don't know if it's been you. But anyway, with that being said um do grab this calendar i'm super proud of myself i created it all every single detail and i truly appreciate any support if you feel called to um if you could support in any way by getting a reading or waiting for the patreon um or just support by liking and sharing and commenting on the video uh, it would really help the algorithm and i'm truly asking for help <laughs> i'm asking for help but with that being said, I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Angel out. Bye.